Hi there, my name is Suzanne Bryan and I am a TKGA Certified Master Hand Knitter and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to work a Russian graft. A Russian graft is really fun and easy to do and I'm going to show you how to do it using one set of live stitches and a set of slipped stitches. So we're going to join a slipped stitch edge to a live stitch edge and so the first thing we need to do is to get these slipped stitches onto a needle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick up the slip stitch edge. Let's make this bigger so we can see it better. The front leg of each slip stitch I'm just going to pick it up and put it on a needle such as this. Sometimes it's easier to do it on a needle that's a much smaller size like right now I'm using a 7. I knitted this with the US 7. You know you could use a 1 or a 3 or a 4 to pick these up because it can get a little bit tight. Then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to line the two pieces up side by side with the right sides up. And you want your they're on two separate needles and you want the needle points facing each other such as this. This does not require any extra yarn. You're not going to have a working yarn. To, uh, you're just going to be working with these stitches. So we're going to start out by slipping the stitch from the right needle this is the slipped stitch. We're slipping it over to the left needle and with the right needle tip you catch the front leg of the first stitch on the left needle and with the right needle pull it off. So that first slipped stitch is now around the neck of that stitch. That first stitch from the left needle. Then you take the left needle, you go through that slipped, the stitch you slipped over, grab the front leg of the next stitch on the right needle and pull it over to the left needle allowing the stitch from the left needle to slide off. Then you put the right needle through that, pick up the front leg of the next stitch on the left needle and slide it off. Then you take the left needle, slide it through the first stitch on the right needle, catch the front leg of the second stitch and pull it onto the left needle. And you just keep doing this back and forth. It's a two-step process. It's like creating a zipper. And it zips the two pieces of fabric together. This is really fun to do. Once you become proficient, proficient at it, it's very quick. And it makes a tidy graft. This is the Russian graft. And I'll show you a sample of what it looks like once I get these all together on a lace shawl. Now this is not something that you would use for a shoulder join or anything like that where you need something structurally sound. This does not replace a three needle bind off and such. But when you're putting lace pieces together like joining a lace border to the body of a lace piece this is a great join, a great grafting method. I hope I'm not calling it a Russian join because it's really a Russian graft. Russian join is where you put the ends of two um, pieces of yarn together. Now we have one stitch left so we're just going to graft it onto here and then we have a tail. Usually you, when you're working this you're working it towards a cast on edge and you take that last the tail and pull it through the last stitch. That's not very successful. And pull it off. Now if you wanted to, and so here let's see what it looks like. Isn't that cool? Looks like a zipper. I love it. Now if you wanted to take this out all you have to do is undo that last um, Pull that off and this will literally just pull apart. 
Of course, on the one piece, we're going to have live stitches left, but it will just pull apart. And it's basically you're unzipping the teeth. Isn't that cool? So you can do uh, what I did here, which was having live stitches on one side and slip stitches on the other, or you could have two pieces that have slip stitches, so you're joining slip stitches to slip stitches. Some people will actually pick up stitches out of this, like pick up and knit through these slip stitches and use that as the join. Whatever works for you is great. You can try them all and experiment. That's what I do. This is a piece of lace that I grafted. Here's the graft right here. So these were live stitches on this side. These were picked up stitches on this lace border and I grafted them together and you can see the little zipper there. It's very small because it's, it's a lace weight yarn but you can see the zipper. Actually it'll look better if we can see it this way. It'll be right side up. There's the join. So you can see where this slip is, this stitch is slipped over that one, this is slipped over this one, then so so right in here is the zipper. And it's pretty invisible when you come down to looking at the finished piece. Now this is a lace tutorial um, that I have a series of videos for. It's called Lace Work, a Skill Building Tutorial by Suzanne Bryan. That's me. And I show a lot of different ways of creating shawls. This is a crescent shawl. We start out with a square one, then we do a pie shawl and then a circular. Um, I'm sorry, the pie shawl is a circular shawl. Then we go to the triangular shawl. Then this is the crescent section and the next section is going to be an asymmetrical shawl. I hope you join me and watch the rest of the videos. I have links down in the description and it'll give you links to the tutorial, the other videos, my contact information. I have a group on Facebook where we do a lot of talking about technical issues of knitting and my videos. It's called Knitting with Suzanne Bryan and I have a group on Ravelry called Knitting with Suzanne Bryan and it would Please me if you joined those groups. It's a way of thanking me and participating further and learning more about knitting. And also if you would subscribe to my channel. And just an FYI, if I go too fast in my videos or too slow, there is a little thing that you can click on on your video. Sometimes it says more, sometimes it's a little setting button, and it's usually down in this area of the video. Sometimes it's up in this corner, depending on what kind of phone or iPad or a computer that you're using and you click on that and you can change the speed of the video. You can make it slower or faster. Also there along the bottom of the video there is a red line and you can put your finger on the red dot or your cursor and move it back and forth in the video. So if there's a part that you want to see again you can move it back. If you want to skip a whole section you can move it all the way to this end and click on that section too. So I hope you join me in watching more videos. This is the first time that I've done this method of having myself up in the corner. So let me know what you think about that. It's a trial and I hope you come back. Happy knitting. Bye-bye.